When you're preparing for MSQE or DSC or IGIDR, what should not be done? I refrain from using the word should, but in this particular case, I am tempted to use that because there are particular things by which you can sabotage your economics entrance preparation. Things like reading a lot of microeconomics and macroeconomics books and not referring to the exact syllabus and the syllabus coverage. Because when I say variant, as I have said in a lot of my videos, the undergrad variant microeconomics textbook, I say that very, very seriously and with a lot of thought. Because the coverage of concepts in microeconomics is pretty limited for your economics entrance. And when you expand your coverage or depth of microeconomics, you ultimately lose out a lot of your time and a lot of your focus. Because ultimately you have to prepare a lot of practice problems and those practice problems need not come from textbooks. They would majorly come from previous year question papers. So in that case you need to have some amount of time to practice the question papers in depth. And as I have said in my earlier videos as well, do not try to go for the volume of questions but try to understand every question in depth. I mean try to give every question sufficient amount of time. That could be let's say half an hour to a question, one hour to a question, two hour to a question. Upper limit is like nothing for a question. Any question in ISI in economics can really really be thought in many ways and it can be transformed to 10-20 problems and it will help you a lot in your conceptual clarity and getting more practice problems to solve. So that is why you need to have a very focused approach and stick to few books. For microeconomics, I've always told that stick to Varian, the undergrad textbook. And if you want to solve more problems, you have Varian workbook. So get hold of Varian workbook along with previous year question papers of IASI, DSC and IGIDR. Now, there are other things which you should not do. What are those things? Those things are, there are people who spend a lot of time in researching about books and resources for macro models like international trade models. I mean, you can read those and you ideally should read those books. But the thing over here is that those questions, rather those topical questions are quite limited in nature. You might get something around 5 to 10 percent of weightage to those topics and this is like upper limit. It's highly possible that you might not even get any questions on your trade models or your mini macro models which are part of the syllabus. But essentially speaking there are few models which you must know like solo swan model and your ISLM model. These are the models which you cannot miss but there are a lot of models in macroeconomics which do not appear in the question paper quite frequently and if you have gone through my MSQE question paper analysis then you would realize that the international trade models or the mini macro models which is in the syllabus has a very limited weightage. Don't scatter away your concentration to many things in macro as well. Now next thing which you must not do is read a lot of mathematics textbook and think that you understand the concepts you can solve the problem no you need to practice a lot of questions and j level questions i'm repeatedly saying j level questions because people come up to me and say that i have ncrt is it good enough uh, they say that i have solved the rd sharma questions uh, is it good enough the thing about maths is it's never good enough rather for any competitive entrance examination nothing is good enough so practice as much as you can but again the key thing over here is do not go for quantity but go for quality solve every mathematics question in a way that you can make three four questions out of it next thing is a lot of people think that solving a lot of sample papers will help them no it will not i have also made a video on that you can check this out from here now what is the next thing the next thing is they think that there is an ideal number of hours to study no there is no ideal number first calculate the number of hours available to you and then see how much you can devote and also have a proper fragmentation of your time rather allocate your time properly 
to micro, max and macro. And as per as my understanding, give the maximum amount of time to max, then microeconomics, then macroeconomics. So this is the order in which you should devote your time. And yes, when I say maths, it includes your statistics and econometrics as well. Because in DSC, you have econometrics. But for IGIDR and ISI, you do not have econometrics. Now, what is the next thing? The next thing is people think that getting hold of solutions to Varian or Snyder or any textbook will help you in your preparation. No, it will never help you. It will rather bring your conceptual clarity down it will bring your confidence down it will bring your question paper practice level down so do not look for solved question papers because the moment you get the solution you stop thinking now i understand the the thirst the curiosity to get hold of the solution because i also know that when i was a student i wanted to get hold of the solution that what is the real solution for this question but what i would ask you is first check the answers not solution there's a difference answer is just the number or the word and solution is the steps don't look for the steps first first check the answer if you have the answer with you then you don't need to see how that answer has come try to understand what could be the process behind it and only and only when you have given a lot of time to a particular question, you can try to find the solution for it. And trust me, if you try to find out the solution to individual questions, you will learn a lot because these days, internet, YouTube, and uh, there is tons of resources available. So look for answers to specific questions, not entire book or entire chapter. So this is one thing which you must know. Next thing is having a proper strategy for solved examples. Now, Obviously, when I say that do not look for solutions to end of the chapter questions, I definitely am also saying you that do look for the solved examples because solved examples have a purpose because you cannot directly jump into unsolved exercises. So your first approach should be get hold of the solved examples. Do not look at the unsolved questions first. First look at the solved examples. And after you look at the solved example, try to analyze every step and try to find out the alternative ways, faster ways to solve that question. Try to understand what are the assumptions behind this question, the solution. And then you can go to the unsolved questions. And when you go to the unsolved questions, then you should not look for a solution. So these two points, this point and the previous point are closely linked together. That do not look for solutions for end of the chapter questions but definitely analyze the solution for the solved examples. And you should not revise very late in your preparation. Your revision should be done repeatedly after every one or two months. If you are spending like one year for a preparation and let's say you're preparing for three, four months, then every week you should revise whatever you have read. If you do not revise and leave the revision part, for the end of your preparation, then definitely your revision will not be meaningful. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. 